Good morning, Saudi Arabia, Dakar Welcome to this presentation of the Dakar 2024. It's a Dakar that we wanted with a few surprises and special features, but before we talk about it, let's take a look at the route in its entirety. Here it is, this 46th edition of the Dakar 2024. 100% Saudi Arabia, with a Dakar that we wanted to be quite tough right from the start. A tough start with three long special stages. Heading down south into the empty quarter and its big dunes, not like last year when they were at the end, now that they're at the heart of the rally. And then there will be six long stages to reach the finish. This year's Dakar will set off from the city of Alula in northwestern Saudi Arabia, a city which is very popular with tourists from all over the world, and which will welcome the Dakar caravan at the beginning of January. On January the 3rd and the 4th, administrative and technical scrutineering. Then on the morning of the 5th, all the competitors will take part in the prologue in an absolutely magical setting. And then on the morning of the 6th, the first of the 12 stages of this 2024 Dakar. After Africa and South America, it's Saudi Arabia that welcomes us with its countless fields of expression and immense deserts. And before I hand over to him, I'd like to thank the Prince Khaled bin Sultan Al Abdullah Al Faisal and the entire Saudi Motorsports Federation that he leads. Dear friends, it is my sincere pleasure to stand here today in Al Ula, the land of civilization, and welcome you to the starting point of the fifth successive edition of the Dakar Saudi Arabia 2024. This region, carries a historical and humanitarian heritage that extends deep into history with cultural and natural roots shaped by successive civilization of more than 200,000 years. It has been a destination for travelers and explorers for millennia and its many archaeological treasures ensures it remains one of the world's most important historical exploration sites. As we celebrate the fifth year of the Dakar Rally in the Kingdom, the world's attention once again turns to Al Ula. The arrival of the most elite rally drivers from around the globe for their next adventure 
here in Saudi Arabia is one to celebrate as they take the most prestigious and challenging endurance rally on earth. Hosting the Saudi Arabia Dakar Rally for the fifth consecutive year is a significant achievement for which our deep gratitude must go to our king, the custodian of the holy two mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, without whose unwavering support for the advancement of the sports sector, none of this would not be possible. It also reflects the dedication and continuous backing of His Royal Highness Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz. May God protect him as well as the relentless drive of His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Aziz bin Turki Al Faisal. Minister of Sports, who have done so much to provide the resources that have allowed the kingdom to consolidate its position as the new home of more sports in the region in the past decade as stay true to the goals of Vision 2030. Certainly, hosting the prestigious rally in one country for five years in a row with five different routes leaves a remarkable achievement and one of which every Saudi citizen should be immensely proud. The last five years have been a journey of excellence script by Saudi Arabia, proving to the world its capabilities and abilities, reaffirming its leadership as a hub of motor sports and, in a particular, as a true home for the Dakar Rally. This year, we once again Open our arms to welcome you to a renewed date with adventure, excitement, and thrill. I look forward to welcoming each one of you here in Al Ula. Peace be with you, and may the mercy and blessing of God be upon you. Now let's get down to the detail of the course. We're going to start with a prologue, a prologue that we wanted to be longer, 29 kilometers of far sand, in an absolutely magical place to launch this edition. After that, it's on to the first stage. Over 400 kilometers of special, it's going to be a tough stage. So get ready, because right away we're going to get down to the nitty gritty with magnificent sceneries, volcanoes in the background, and new but very, very beautiful tracks. Then stage two will be even longer, over 400 kilometers, still fast, lots of dunes at the start, but it'll be more rolling. But watch out for the length before you reach the third special stage, a long one, over 460 kilometers of special, with all the difficulties of dunes, rocks, and navigation. And there's a special thing, at the finish you only have two hours to work on the cars, then a liaison, and it's a marathon stage, so no assistance. So the first three stages of the Dakar are three real stages. Watch out, watch out. Then we come to stage four, a slightly simpler, more rolling special stage, to get to Al Hofuf. And this is the transition stage, the one that will take us back into the empty quarter with a very long liaison. We'll get up early in the morning and finish with a short 120 kilometer special in the dunes to get ready for the real empty quarter on stage six. And then we come to the highlights of this 2024 edition. It will be stage six, reminiscent of the great epics of the African era, endless stages. So here's this 48-hour stage, this surprise of the Dakar 2024. So a stage of almost 600 kilometers, a little less. Dunes in the empty quarter. But what makes it special is that it will take place over two days. Yes, two full days to cover 600 kilometers. It's rare, but we don't have a choice. The stage is difficult and long. We've decided that at 4 p.m. on the first day, all competitors will have to join one of the eight bivouacs we've set up along the route. 
These are very basic bivouacs with just a sleeping bag, a tent, and military-style food ration, and nothing else. So they spend the night there, and the next morning we start again in the order of arrival, one by one, every minute, and the competitors set off again to finish this stage number six. Let's take a look at what the drivers have to say about it. I am already excited to try something new. Uh, if I like it, I will tell you afterwards, because I'm a little bit scared of the darkness, but I'm sure I will survive. I think that's actually, you know, the foundation of rally there. Nous, on l'a vécu naturellement dans les années Afrique, les, les, les étapes marathon. Et en fait, c'est toujours dans ces moments-là qu'il y avait un, encore plus de solidarité entre tous les compétiteurs, parce qu'on se retrouvait vraiment entre nous, on échangeait, et c'était vraiment des bons moments de partage. Those are some of the best times of Dakar. I mean, all of us drivers, uh, you know, sleep in one area, and we all got to sleep in, in tents and, and ration together. So it's some of the most fun. Everybody comes together and then smiles, and it's like a little camp time story afterwards. Anything that you know, adds, adds a variable or two to the race can make for a good event. I think it's cool that they're putting uh, new concepts in and um, throwing us into the unknown, you know, that's a bit what sort of the rally spirit is. And uh, I guess it brings back a bit of that, um, you know, you're on your own sort of thing. And it's just going to be interesting. It'll kind of even out everyone. They're going to be in different areas throughout the throughout the la uh, those two days. So you're not going to exactly know uh, where you are on times and everything. Yo creo que le da un poquito más, le echa un poquito más de sal y pimienta a la carrera y será una de las etapas estelares. Y donc d'y ajouter encore du piment, d'y ajouter une étape comme celle-là qui va nous qui va nous épuiser, je pense qu'on peut faire, on va pouvoir faire la différence physiquement. You know, we always wanted a little bit of the old Dakar back in the in the new style stuff, so it's going to be a harder marathon stage than normal. David siempre nos sorprende con sus ideas y sí, la verdad es que hemos vuelto a los orígenes del Dakar con etapas de mil kilómetros. We see how we can uh, make the strategy for this day. We need to to be sometime, you know, together with the two teams, you know, and uh, uh, to at least um, work together. Sure, for for all the competitors, it's it's yeah, let's say maybe the toughest stage in the in the Dakar history. Until now, I like it, but when we see it, we we have the feeling really. Immediately after stage six, we transfer to the country's capital, Riyadh, which will host the rest day. So the rest day is an opportunity for us to talk about the Dakar future. Indeed, since 2021, Dakar has been studying everything that's happening in terms of energy transition. It's important for us to make this transition by 2030. So we've already had the Audis driving with us thanks to hybrid engines, but we also had many other projects coming to the Dakar with hydrogen solutions or using biofuels, with the aim of getting them all on the tracks this year we created Dakar Future Mission 1000. The transition is underway. The Dakar 2024 will serve as a laboratory with a view to a low carbon 2030 horizon. More than an automobile competition, it's a challenge open to alternative energy vehicles. Seven projects have been selected, lining up 10 vehicles, cars, motorcycles, and trucks. Our vehicle is a medley of new technologies linking a combustion engine and an electric engine. The idea was to, to start using this hydrogen, converting the truck, and make it possible to make a greener race. The Dakar gives me the possibility in 2024 to compete with an electric motorbike. Our target is to make realize the hydrogen engine, the solution for the carbon neutral society in the future. Hydrogen, electric, or even a hybrid powertrains with a minimal amount of synthetic fuel. The aim to test these alternative energy vehicles in real conditions on parts of the stages. 1,000, as in 1,000 kilometers to be covered over the whole rally. Around 100 a day in extreme conditions. Evaluation criteria will be used to establish a points-based ranking. We're going to do tests during the 2024 Dakar to then develop bikes that can do a real rally, a real Dakar in 2025. Step by step, we want to show the potential year by year. We love the Dakar and if the Dakar is willing to reduce this footprint, this is a good opportunity.
We aim at the Dakar, but not in a simple way. We're going to add a dimension to the project thanks to the technological development of a clean vehicle. The future is here. These vehicles will be the future of the Dakar. Each competitor becomes a pioneer of Dakar future and a player in the future of mobility. Then it's on to the second week with a very strong start between the capital Riyadh and Al Duadimi, 476 kilometers of special, a complicated stage to start with, with navigation, sand and stones. All the ingredients are there. After that, we'll alternate a little, second stage to get back to Harrow for this second week, a little easier with sand and a transfer in the middle, so not too complicated. After that, we'll head down to Alula, which we'll reach for the second time on this Dakar with a 100% sand special, 435 kilometers, magnificent, not always easy, but a very, very beautiful stage. Then, once again, we ease off a little, a big loop around Alula, exceptional scenery, these big rocks where we'll be slumming, looking for the right track in the middle of canyons. A beautiful stage for over 350 kilometers. Not too difficult before tackling the main events at the end of the Dakar. This is stage 11, which will take us back to Yambu. Those who remember it well will be those who had a puncture last year on stage 2 of the Dakar 2023, because we'll be going on the same rocky, complicated tracks. So watch out for punctures on this stage 11. All the cards can be reshuffled. And then it's the last stage of the Dakar, a short stage, of course, to finish off the rally in style on the shores of the Red Sea, where the finish of the special stage will be judged. Then it's back to the big city of Yambu, which will welcome us on the shores of the Red Sea for a grand arrival ceremony, and we'll be celebrating the Dakar heroes in style. There are 4,700 kilometers of specials to cover on this Dakar, a long Dakar with 3,300 kilometers of the liaison, a Dakar that will start on January the 5th for the prologue, January the 6th for the first stage, and will finish in the town of Yambu on January the 19th. A fantastic course, an exceptional lineup. Once again, six factory teams will be joining the Dakar 2024. We'll have KTM with its trio of former winners, title holder Kevin Benavides alongside Toby Price and Matthias Waldner. Honda will of course be looking to reclaim the trophy that was won in 2020 and 2021 with the likes of Ricky Brabeck, with Adrien van Beveren, Pablo Quintanilla and newcomer and former Husqvarna rider Skyler House. Gas Gas will be present with two candidates for victory, Sam Sutherland, winner in 2022, and Daniel Sanders, the Australian who is going faster and faster and has already won a rally this year in Mexico. Husqvarna will also be present with recent W2RC Championship winner Luciano Benavides, not forgetting of course the hero team with its top rider Ross Branch and newcomer Juan Barreda, who joins the team this year. And of course, the French Cherco team, always fast with its three riders who often take first positions on the stages. On quads, Alexandre Giroud will be looking to make it three after his two victories in 2022 and 2023. And then, of course, beyond all these top riders, there are all the amateurs who have been writing Dakar history for a long time. Without them, the Dakar would exist. They are the rally too. Once more, within this category, there are more and more youngsters and youngsters going very fast and battling it out with the rally GP guys. And then there are those who come without assistance, another Dakar Spirits, but one we've preserved thanks to our partner Motul. They are the original by Motul, who come without any assistance, no trucks, no mechanics. They're all on their own, and they're also part of the great history of the Dakar. You know, you take the hardest race in the world and you make it harder, Every day, when you cross that finish line, you know that you've done it all on your own. You've had no help. You've worked on your own bike, and you've got this. Lo más importante es no caer. Si te caes, eh, pierdes muchísimo. No! No! Ah! No! Muy importante que que tengas las herramientas para la moto que llevas. Sobre todo, dormir bien. 
and I wanted to come back and do Malimoto to get the full Dakar experience. Crazy can't describe them because what, what, what you go through here and where the conditions you sleep in and um, the hours that you get sleep, you're like wired differently. Um, but it's just because we love the sport so much. Let's move to the car category and the ultimate category, the T1. Defending champion Nasser al has changed vehicle and team. Like his rival Sebastian Loeb, he will be driving a Hunter Pro Drive. Audi shows up with its three Fantastics, Stefan Petrancel, Carlos Sainz and Matthias Ekstrom, with the aim of winning this Dakar for the first time with a hybrid-powered vehicle. At Toyota Gazoo, former winner Genial de Villiers is joined by two young guns, Lucas Moraes, third of the last Dakar, and American Seth Quintero, who's changing categories. At Toyota Overdrive, Yazid al Raji is aiming for home victory. He will be joined by Guerlain Chichrit and a whole new generation of drivers, such as Guillaume de Mevius and Juan Cruz Jacopini. In the X-Raid Mini category, Shistov Holovchik, third in 2015, but absent since then, is back in action. And the two-wheel drive cars are back with a vengeance with the Hanway team presenting two buggies and a new four-wheel drive T1+. Plus. The MD rally team will be out in force with Christian Lavier and Simon Witz in particular. And look out too for the Century Racing Buggies with Mathieu Siradori in his SR Team team. And welcome to Ford, joining the adventure with the aim of winning in the years to come, notably with former winner Nani Roma. We move on to the T3 category, renamed Challenger T3. The Red Bull Off-Road Junior Team USA fields defending champion Austin Jones and another contender, Mitch Guthrie. The Red Bull Canon Factory Team sees T4 runner-up Brokas Basiuska move up to the next category. He will be accompanied by Cristina Gutierrez and Chaleco Lopez. Eric Gogsal, winner in a T4 SSV on the Dakar 2023, also changes class. However, he'll be staying with his family, with his father Marek and uncle Michal at Energy Landia Racing. Yamaha will also be present with former quad winner Ignacio Casale. The SSV T4 category continues to attract competitors and seems to be the best way to discover the Dakar. It will feature Polaris SSVs from the Sebastian Loeb Racing and Extreme Plus teams, as well as Can-Am South Racing with the promising Joao Ferreira and Sarah Price. Finally, in the truck race, Janis van Kasteren is putting his title back on the line. He will once again be battling it out with the Czechs Martin Macic and Alice Lopreis, as well as Dutch compatriots Martin and Mitchell van den Brink. And alongside this Dakar, we'll have the Dakar Classic. The Dakar Classic uses the same bivouacs as its big brother. But on the other hand, the routes are adapted. Adapted because we have old vehicles coming to the race. These are the vehicles that made us dream. And so we'll be discovering the fourth edition of the event. En allant vers l'extrême, eh bien, on se sort complètement les tripes. On se sort les, les sentiments ignorés au fond du fond de soi. Et on va vers une espèce de plénitude. Et si la course est un prétexte, si la mécanique est un prétexte, eh c'est un bon prétexte. Le Dakar est avant tout une, une espèce d'école de l'aventure géante. 
C'est un moyen de remettre en avant des notions pour moi très importantes, notion d'audace, notion de courage, notion de toujours aller de l'avant et toujours aller un petit peu plus loin. Et c'est pour cela que tous les ans, nous recherchons non pas la difficulté gratuite, mais euh, la piste, la piste euh, entre guillemets, qui nous permet d'aller au-devant eh bien au-devant de, de sentiments forts, de souvenirs impérissables et aussi surtout de grands moments dans notre vie d'aventurier moderne. On y est arrivé, je sais pas comment, mais on y est arrivé. This Dakar 2024 will also be the opening event of the World Rally Ray Championship, the W2RC, which will then move on to the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge for its second round. And a newcomer, Portugal, in April, which will be also in Spain for a new European event. After that, we'll be off to Ruta 40 in Argentina, and the championship will end once again in Morocco with the Rally du Maroc in October. And we'd like to end this presentation by extending our warmest thanks to Saudi Arabia, which has been our host for the past five years. And of course, not forgetting our Dakar partners for their trust and loyalty, which enable us to develop and promote the Dakar throughout the world. Thanks to all of you, and now let the adventure start. Oh, God!